I have a cold. <clears throat> and I'm still recording videos because I'm dedicated. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> um, hi! I have new hair again. It's now shorter and more red. Um, that's exciting news. <laughs> my other exciting news is that my entire life has changed because I read a book. <laughs> Shall I expand? So, this year, and by this year I mean literally this month, last month maybe, I read a little book that you might have heard of called Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. <laughs> and it's literally changed my life. It's changed my perception on what I like to read and what I don't. Um, it's made me wonder if I can trust my own kind of instincts with if I'm gonna like a book or not. It's basically just frazzled my brain and made me feel very confused, but also very excited at the same time. <laughs> I have, this year I've started a young adult book club um, in my town. We meet in Waterstones every month and each meeting we just kind of all decide as a group um, what book we're gonna pick for the next meeting. And the, what was the first book? The first book we picked was Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. And then we decided to go with something kind of wildly different because we were like, let's not do another contemporary. Um, let's go for something different and let's also go for something that's been on our TBR lists for a while. For me, that was Six of Crows. It's one of those books that people have talked about a heck of a lot. Like, uh, it's so hyped. Um, and then, like, I interviewed Akemi Dawn Bowman on my podcast last year, and she talked about Six of Crows being one of her favourite books ever. I was just kind of like, I own it, but I've never read it. And she was like, you should. Um, good advice. <laughs> so I decided that, um, considering I asked for it for Christmas a couple of years ago, still never read it. Don't know why I asked for it, because I it took me this long to get around to reading it. Um, fantasy generally isn't my thing, or so I've always said. Uh, I've always said that contemporary YA is my thing. Only just realised, going through my Goodreads earlier, that I haven't read that many contemporaries this year. Probably a little reason for that, and I'm getting get to that eventually. So, when we finally read Six of Crows for book club, I went into it kind of not really thinking that I was going to be a big fan of it. I was kind of like, I don't know what I'm going to think of this. My prediction was maybe like a three or four star or something. Um, I was thinking, yeah, it'll be all right. Oh, how wrong I was. I, for the first maybe 100 pages or something, I don't have the book with me because I've lent it to my friend, but for the first maybe about 100 pages, I'm not sure, like the maybe the whole first like section of the book is split into several parts. Um, I was a bit confused by it. I was kind of like, I don't know what is going on. I don't know who any of these people are. I even tweeted saying, should I have read other Grisha books first before Six of Crows? Because I'm very confused. I don't know who anyone is and I don't know what's going on. Um, help me. And people basically said, it was kind of a split. Some people were saying, yes, you should read the other Grisha books first because it gives you a good kind of basic knowledge of the magic system and things before you go into some of the other Grisha books. Other people were saying just read Six of Crows, it's fine. Um, you are thrown in the deep end so that's why you're probably confused by who the characters are and things and like the whole um, place that it's set. You don't get many kind of, you don't get much build up you, you're thrown straight into the story with all these characters that you've never heard of before. So I think that was why I was thrown off a little bit to start with. It's not the kind of book that I will usually pick up and read. So yeah, it was a little bit strange to begin with. And then I started kind of reading more and more of the book and it got into the story and I started to get to know all these characters. And I'm not even sure which point of the book just clicked for me but there must have been a certain point where I just really got into it and loved it because then where the whole kind of first half of the book took me a little while to get into and I was just reading a little bit each day I then 
finished the rest of the book pretty much overnight. Like, I stayed up and just read the book and I think I went to bed at maybe like 2 a.m. or something because I just couldn't put it down, like couldn't put it down. I wanted to carry on reading it. Um, I was hooked and there was no way out until I finished this book. <laughs> I loved it so much that it kind of blew my mind. And now I'm left confused and wondering what it is about this book that made me love it so much. <laughs> I kind of now see what people say, where they say that it's one of the best YA books, full stop, not even within its genre, literally just one of the best YA books. Because it's just incredible. It's flawless. Um, I can't think of any flaws for Six of Crows at all. Okay, maybe the beginning is a little bit hard to get into, but when you carry on reading the rest of the story, you kind of forget that you find the beginning difficult to get into because you then suddenly love all of these characters so much and you forget that you didn't really know these characters going into the book. It's really strange. Like, I, oh, I don't even know what to say. My mind's just blown. I just... <laughs> So if you're one of those people that hasn't read Six of Crows before, um, I feel like you maybe wouldn't be clicking on this video if you haven't, but just in case you're here and you don't know what it's about, it basically follows six people that are part of like a gang called the Dregs and they literally are like the Dregs of society. So they're ones that have been cast out. Um, they're ones that are like different. They feel like they have no place. They're all recruited by Kaz Brecker who has a very interesting past. Like, you find find out so much about his backstory throughout the, the book. That's one thing I love about this book, is that it really effortlessly kind of weaves in all the backstories of some of these characters. Um, so you learn so much about them without it being really obvious info dump backstory. It weaves it so well into the plot. It's just so like intricately weaved through that you don't even realize that you're reading backstory and it makes you learn so much about the characters and fall in love with them. Um, but yeah, Kaz Brecker is kind of like the main dude. He's the, <laughs> he's the kind of like the head of this little um, gang. And they are, he, he's recruiting people to go and do this big deadly mission um, to, it's basically a heist to go and um, break this prisoner out of, the ice court, which is kind of like this big dangerous place that they're just like, we don't even know if we're going to survive to get out, um, but we will be rich if we do it. The prize is like a crazy amount of money that is, none of them have ever even considered that much money before. So they do it and they go on this big heist to go and um, try and break into the ice court to go and save this prisoner. If someone told me that synopsis like if someone told me that's what the book is about maybe last year or a couple of years ago I would have been like I'm not bothered then I'm not gonna read it because fantasy isn't my thing heists aren't really something I'm interested in so it's just not for me so why did I love this book so much <laughs> this is what I want to know um I think it's because Lee Bardugo she is so incredible at setting up characters that you just either love or hate. All of these characters are just incredible. They all have these backstories that make you fall in love with them and um, you get to know these characters as if they're actual real people. And I feel like that is part of the, or even the main reason why these books are so good is because of the characters that, that make the story. Um, the story, I feel like, wouldn't be anything if it didn't have incredible characters to bring the story to life. And I feel like that is one thing that she is so good at. I mean, I haven't read any of her other books yet, but just going, ba like, just based on Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, she's so good at characterizations um, and kind of setting the scene. I can't think of any part of these books that feels like an info dump. So there's no part where you kind of, they go to this place and you just get endless description of what it's like, but you still find yourself 
having like crystal clear pictures of what everything looks like and what the characters look like and how they act and how they interact with each other and like their relationships and just you just I read the entire book picturing it like a film which is just crazy because there's not I don't think there's even that much like description of the places and the characters I think Lee Bardugo is some sort of wizard and I am now so excited to go and read all of the rest of the Grisha books <laughs> um obviously you might have seen by now that the Netflix series has been announced so they're I don't know how they're doing it but they're doing a series that kind of combines Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows. I'm so excited for it now that I've read Six of Crows. When it was announced it was like a few months ago it was announced and I was like all right cool hadn't read it yet. Now I've read it I am like buzzing for that series to come out and now I think next year when I read the Shadow and Bone books. I'm gonna start reading them from January, I think. I'm gonna read one a month. Um, I'm like buddy reading them with tons of other people who also want to read the Grisha books. I'm excited to get more of this world and like find out more about the magic system and find out more about the whole country and the culture. And yeah, I just, I'm kind of, my mind is blown that I now feel so involved with this book series that I was never interested in before. I was obviously interested enough to ask for the book for Christmas, but I think that was just because it was so hyped and I knew that I might get around to reading it at some point. But the fact that I have fallen so deeply in love with these books has blown my mind. So the reason why it's kind of changed my life so much is because it's made me reflect on the kind of books that I like and this year has been big for that anyway. Like I've been reconsidering a lot of the books that I love. So for ages, for like the past couple of years since setting up my blog, I've always said that contemporary YA is my favorite thing. But I kind of had a bit of a thing a couple of months ago where I was just like, I don't wanna read any contemporary YA at the moment. I feel like I've been, I've kind of stuck in a rut with it. I've read so many that feel so similar I don't know, not even similar. It's I don't know what it is about it. I'm just starting to want to read other things. So I read, like this year I've read The Night Circus and I read um, Six of Crows and oh God, I can't even remember. There's some other books as well. I'm currently reading Last Bus to Everland by Sophie Cameron. Um, and that's another one that's kind of like magical realism. It's made me kind of realise that my favourite genre right now is that sort of magical realism thing where these books still feel like they're based in reality but they have these fantasy or magical elements to them. I still stick by my word that high fantasy I, I, will, I would struggle to get into. So, you know, things like Lord of the Rings or um, anything that is so high fantasy that there's no reality in them at all. Like it's literally all fantasy. I still stick by my opinion that I feel like I will struggle to get into those. However, I've realized that my favorite genre right now anyway, is anything that is still rooted in reality. So it feels like a story that is happening in our world, but it has magical or fantasy elements in it. And even though Six of Crows is set in a fantasy world, so it's sat and set in a world that doesn't exist, it doesn't feel like that. Like it feels like it could be set in Britain or something. Like it literally feels like it's set in the real world, but it has these kind of magical, like it has a magic system and it has all these different cultures. It's these kind of books, same as like the Night Circus, where it's still very based in reality, but it's magical on top of it like it's got all these magical elements and I just love it so much um and it's kind of crazy to me that I've never really considered this to be a genre that I'm interested in until I've just read a couple of books that have all been five star reads that have just completely changed my mind on my favorite genre and it kind of feels I'm so confused why I haven't discovered this before, but it's also kind of opened my eyes to so many different books and I'm really excited to start reading so many books that I would never have considered reading before. 
I'm so grateful to Six of Crows because it's it's that book in particular that has changed my whole perception of the kind of books that I think I like and think I don't like. Um, when you get a book like that, it feels so special. I'm just so grateful to it for kind of opening my eyes to a whole new world of books that I never would have discovered before. So, Lee Bardugo, thank you very much. <laughs> right, I now can't breathe. Um, I am going to go and sit down and try and breathe through my nose because right now, um, I can't breathe. So I will see you soon. Bye.